Hello! I am here in a very different place with something very different for us today. Uh, I was generously gifted two sets of these acrylic markers from Artex, and so today we are actually going to be testing them out and doing a little unboxing, which is new for this channel and new for me, and I'm very excited, so let's get started. All right, so the first one we're going to open is this set here, and I'm very excited to see what they look like. Get this box off. Moment of truth. And here we are. Oh, they're small. I like the size of these a lot. And they're really cute. It looks like there's two layers here, so I'm going to take one off. This looks like it might be a blender, perhaps. We'll see. Maybe just like an opaque white. And... Oh, no, we lost one already. It didn't fall, which I'm going to consider a win. My cameraman's laughing at me. I'm sorry! <laughs> <laughs> I'm giggling in the background the entire time. Oh, okay, it's like a little... That's actually really nice packaging. I really like that, so I didn't have to do this at all. And then, oh, we have like some like foresty... Oh, I did drop one. <laughs> you know what, that's a part of the process. Oh my gosh, these are like really fun. It looks like they have a brush tip. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at that. Yeah, that's really nice. I'm very excited to try these out. Let's get the other one open first before I get ahead of myself. Okay, so take two. Now that we have experience and we know what to expect, I'm feeling much more confident about my opening abilities. All right, this is on, these are little color guides, which is nice. I love having these on hand. And so we can see, oh, they even have little stickers with hearts. <gasps> that is so cute. Okay, great. And so we have this little shelf. Look at how easily that comes off when you know what you're doing. Oh, these are really, really fun colors. Like together with the pastels and these, I'll get those over so you can all look at them together. These are really, really nice. It's a really nice selection of just like different hues and different saturations. I'm very, very excited to play with and blend. So looking beautiful, very excited to try them. But let's put them to the test. And we're back inside because it was so windy that drawing and talking was just not happening. <laughs> I'm just gonna make a couple of color palettes here really quickly and see how some of these colors are together and then we'll get to drawing. Uh, as I mentioned and kind of showed you guys, these are two different sets. There's the 30A and 30B. Um, I will have a link in my description, very YouTube, um, if you want to go check those out. So yeah, uh, I believe that they are around like the ballpark of $25, I want to say, and I believe they are on sale right now, which is really cool if this is the kind of thing you'd like to check out. So I'm going to speed this part up, I think, probably, so you don't have to watch me like painstakingly pick colors. Um, and then I also want to try doodling on a little tin I have, which I'll include in there too, and then we'll get to the art. All right. So as you can see, it covers really, really nicely, even on metal, and it's very, very versatile, even for a first coat. So I'm really happy with that, and I'm excited to try drawing something on paper, so let's go. Okay, so I started this little blackbird, uh, which I've been seeing a lot of. I, I alluded to the fact that I am somewhere new today, and uh, it's because I am abroad, actually, and I've been seeing a lot of these little blackbirds that look a lot different than the ones that I'm used to in home in America. Uh, they've got like these little yellow rings around their eyes and these bright yellow beaks and feet and the little yellow rings keep reminding me of like little glasses so i wanted to draw like a magical little blackbird um as you can see here the orange and yellow cover the black really nicely um i wanted to go ahead and get a head start on this because i did want it to dry a little bit because my first attempt obviously was a little too eager <laughs> and the yellow did get lost because that's what happens when you try to use yellow on wet black paint but <laughs> but i'm Again, just very happy with how it covers. Um, yeah, so I never really thought I'd be the kind of person to go abroad, let alone have the funds to do something like that, but I had a couple lucky breaks this year and it's been kind of surreal. Uh, one through community college and the other through getting kicked off of a plane. Um, yeah, it's been kind of overwhelming and I feel like I'm still adjusting. I've been here for like a week now, but um, I'm, I'm also very, very grateful, and it has been really cool to see a lot of new things, uh, including this little guy. Um, there are a lot of really neat birds over in Europe. Um, I'm in Belgium with my friend's family, and I've been stunned by just like the 
huge wood pigeons they have um, everywhere. They're just giant, giant freaking pigeons. And then there's like magpies, which are so cute. And I just, it's, it's been really cool. All right, so we're gonna add a little background here. Um, I kind of like embellished around here with these clovers and then realized I didn't want them to be there because I kind of wanted them to be like a little potion seller guy. So we're gonna see how well this yellow covers those up. Acrylic is really nice because when you make a mistake or when you change your mind, you can just layer and layer until you're happy with it, which as much as I love watercolor, that's something that frustrates me sometimes is when I'm like, oh shoot, I made a mistake and now it's on there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, these are, you know, yellow paint tends to have a little bit of like, oh, you can see a little bit through it, but like, again, I'm not mad about it. I think this looks great so far. I'm just going to do a little more swatching and we're going to give him some shelves, a little doorway to make him look like he's in his cozy little potion selling house. Yeah, I like that these blend, but I also like that they keep their color, you know? Like if you're if you're quick and while it's like still visibly wet, you can go in and blend the colors um, as long as you're willing to risk having a little bit of color on there for the next time you use that color. How many times can I say color in one sentence? <laughs> love that for me. This is what I get for having the window open. Oh, speaking of birds, there's one chattering over here now. I don't know if Mike is picking it up or not. Maybe I'll be quiet for a second. Yeah, the blackbirds have a really, really pretty song. Um, and I, I like that I can tell them. That's one thing that I really liked about birding. I, I think I mentioned last video, I've kind of been in my bird kick lately. Um, and I've been like the youngest person at quite a few birding events near me. And learning like bird calls is crazy because then you go into the forest and it's like all of this information that you didn't even realize was like coming at you is like there. And I'm like, oh wait, I know that. I know what that is. And like, what used to just be background noise to me is now like, whoa, wait, I know that guy, <laughs> which has been pretty cool. Uh, so it's, it's cool being in a, uh, a different country and I'm like, well, I don't know what's going on over here. Like some are kind of familiar, like blackbirds have similar songs here, but they're, they're different and that's super cool. All right, here's his little shelf. Make sure that carries in through. It looks like he's standing in his doorway. I used to collect little bottles when I was in middle school. Not like anything cool, like old potion-y bottles, but like old like glass soda bottles. I had them all like lined up on a shelf. I have no idea what I ever did with those. Okay, so with the blackbird just about done, I want to draw something based on the trains here, which I am a little bit obsessed with. Uh, as an American, um, having like public transit that comes so often and goes everywhere is like magical and on our way to visit a different little city um we took the train during a thunderstorm and so it was all like glowy inside and like stormy and rainy and blue outside and it was just really really beautiful and moody and I just I loved it so I try out a couple colors here I want it to look really like high contrast I'm thinking like a blue or like a purpley blue for the outside of the train and then we're gonna do a kind of similar gradient to the inside of the potion shop for the inside of the train. Something a little simpler than our beautiful bird here. I feel like I always go towards this kind of like golden yellow. It's one of my favorites. Make some cozy little windows. Yeah, no, I, I really did enjoy riding the train. It was really, really fun kind of stressful trying to get to it and um 
we got on the wrong one at first uh, we were trying to go to bruges and we ended up somewhere completely different with an entire group of other tourists from a different country and so we ended up leading them to the other train afterwards too which was really funny and we ended up bumping into each other again later which was pretty hilarious it was like this giant gaggle of guys um which was just really silly it's so sad to think that you know in america we did used to have you know a lot more trains and a lot more access by railway and obviously it's you know double-edged sword as the history is well i mean as bloody as any other thing in american history is honestly but still it really would be nice wouldn't it to be able to just have reliable trains at different times to different cities like god it would be lovely not to have to drive everywhere So it did storm pretty much the entire day we were traveling cities, which honestly I wasn't mad about. I get headaches in the sun, so I was very happy just to have some nice rainy weather. And honestly, it was very pretty. I've, I've always really liked storms. Like, I don't think it's a very unpopular opinion. I know a lot of people like them. I just, there's something about it. It's just very, it really just changes the way the whole world looks and feels for a little bit, which I like. Um, though, you know, sprinting on cobblestone with our um, suitcases in like a grocery bag was not great. It did just kind of feel like the sort of thing that is bound to happen if you're traveling. So <laughs> it, it was great to get into the hotel room, which was a really funny experience now I think about it too. It was like, we got in and we're talking to this guy at the desk and you know, in Belgium, a lot of people speak a lot of different languages. There's so many. And, you know, I am a <sighs> regrettably monolingual person. I only speak English and I know like a handful of Spanish and a handful of French phrases, but nothing, nothing substantial. So, you know, we go through the whole like, what do you speak? We speak English. Okay. You were in the second building. And so he opens a door into like what I assume is slash was a lobby, but it wasn't set up. Um, and we're in this tiny little low lit, like kind of fancy feeling hotel lobby, but then this is like not lit at all. And there's like couches pushed against the walls and like a bunch of lamps that aren't like in their places and nothing's turned on. And it's, it's very like just jarring. And then we go through another door, which seems to be like some kind of lounge restaurant area. It, it looked like Luigi's Mansion, like none of the lights were on and like it's all dark furniture and like dark green carpets and wood paneling and all the furniture isn't set up and we're just dodging through it with our clunky suitcases. <laughs> and he's just strutting straight ahead through this like circular room and then he leads us like outside into an alley. We go through the alley into another door into a much less fancy hotel and then there's no lift so we have to like drag all of our stuff <laughs> up this tiny like marble not even marble no it was like just a tiny like stone staircase and it was really funny but it made getting in and getting to somewhere that had warm drinks just like so magical Okay, I think I'm done with this page, so I'm gonna move on to something else and see what we can get into with some other pages. Are we feeling? I am. Great. So I was looking up on Artex's website and some of their material and they did mention that one of the things that they really strive to do is be an accessible and affordable art company, which if you spent 
any time here on my channel, you will know that that is something I am a huge proponent of, if nothing else. And I have to say, like, seeing an art supply, like, this look genuinely nice and genuinely versatile at, like, an affordable price is really, really cool and really refreshing. Um, I, as somebody who, you know, I can, I can be sometimes on a tight budget, uh, it's always really nice to be able to get supplies that I really, really do enjoy using and not feel like I'm settling for something. Um, which again, I, I never do feel like there's any like tier of art supply that you really need to reach to make the kind of art you want to be making. But it's really cool to see that there are companies who are like really trying to bridge that gap between like having to settle for something when you want the level of quality that you're seeing for higher prices. So I, I'm very happy to see that. And I'm very happy to say that I do genuinely like the product, the way it works, the way it feels. I need to grab a darker color for the nose, I think. Which we can do. Cameraman. Oh, cameraman. Having a cameraman is wonderful. Too risky. That's not darker. Well, maybe not. Cameraman to the rescue. Thank you. This is the darkest we have. And so I'm I'm just I'm very happy. I'm I couldn't be happier to be trying these out for you guys today yeah I really do just the brush tip on the paint marker is kind of a game changer I have to say Alright, to wrap up this video, I just wanted to show you some of the pages and things that I drew with the paint markers over the week. Um, I've been really having fun with them and just adding on to things that I've been working on. It's just a really, really fun way both to draw new things and to add more details to some pages that I'm already working on. And I bookmark them so that you don't get to see the whole sketchbook just yet, so I don't get too excited. But I'm really happy with this deer page. I like how the heron came out. Um, and I'm just really happy that I was given the chance by Artex to check these out and if you're interested in them I will definitely link the product below. You can definitely take a look for yourself and as always Thank you so much for watching and supporting me. I hope you guys take care I hope that you have a good week and I will see you next time. Thank you so much. All right. Bye Okay, that was good Hey, what's up you guys, Celia here. I am here back with another video. This is the end of the video. So I hope you really enjoy it because this is um, the end and I'm showing you what I've been doing this whole video that you've already seen and also some that you have not already seen. So <laughs> this, I did. By yourself? <laughs> All by myself.